Hi guys, I'm back for my July update. I don't know about you guys, but I'm seriously getting warm. I don't know what's been going on, but there's been a crazy heat wave in Germany for the last two to three weeks. And seriously, it's kind of killing my stitchy bug because the only thing I want to do is pretty much nothing when I can. So lying on the couch and watching some stuff instead of stitching. I did, however, do quite a lot at the beginning of the month, uh, up until like the 17th, 18th of the month, the first three or so weeks. I did quite a lot, so uh, I still have progress and finishes to show you, so without further ado, let's jump in. Um, I'm going to start with, I guess, the way I wrote it down in my journal. So the first little bit is stash and also right away some progress. So um, I think I've mentioned it, but my dad move, is moving, or I actually helped him at the end of the month, moving from his temporary house into his almost finished new house. And he's having a housewarming early October. So still quite a lot of time, but we came to talking a couple months ago and I suggested that I stitch him something for his new house. I already stitched him something, something before. Um, it's a, it was a coffee cup design, Let's Do Coffee by Ursula Michael, but uh, this time um, I wanted to give him something else, something he picked out last time I was surprised, but this time he picked it out. So we sat together, we went over everything that we could possibly think of uh, in terms of themes and then at some point we ended up with fabric choices, thread choices and a pattern and the pattern that he picked out is Wine by Alessandra Adelaide Designs and I gotta say I really really like this. I have seen some of her other designs as well done. I think on Stitch Mania some time ago someone did like a lip, full lip design all in beads which was so pretty um, and I think these sort of designs lent themselves very well to personalization and customization and especially variegated threads. Uh, I didn't go this way here because the story behind this is I already ordered this and of June, mid-June, and I ordered it from the UK, so living in Germany it shouldn't take too long, but a month later I still didn't get my package. I emailed and it turned out that, um, that it just slipped through the cracks and um, they forgot to send it out, which is can happen. I mean, I've ordered before at the company and I've always got my packages very fast, so I'm can happen, it's not not too bad. So either way, I did not really want to wait um, more time to pick out a, an order of variegated thread to match my fabric, so instead I just raided my thread boxes, but we'll get to this later. Anyway, so Wine by Alessandra and Adelaide was stashed this month, and of course I also needed some fabric to go with this. So I ordered from the Crafty Kitten um, a piece of fabric called Jurassic Sand, which is this very pretty mottled browny beigey color, sort of coffee tea dyed ish, but a little bit more brown. Really, really like it. It is. I actually might have picked the the more beigey side because the back side is definitely more brown but anyway I just picked one of the sides at random and then this is where the wine bottle is gonna come on and I already started this and I got a very good chunk of it done this is all the way to the top and halfway down the bottle so Chart wise, I'm about 50% done, obviously, since this is um, much less stitch width than the bottom. It'll take me a little bit more time to finish the bottom, but 
Either way, very good progress. I'm quite happy with how this shows up because um, I did a project right before this one where I did one thread over two. And this was a 36 count. And then being in that mindset, I started stitching this with also one thread. And I did already quite a lot before I realized that I only picked one thread. And then I was kind of afraid that it wouldn't show up too well. But I'm really happy with how the color is showing up to the background. And I'm actually going to leave it like this. Just one thread over two it could have been more stand out, more bulky, but I actually kind of like how this is showing up. So it doesn't really need any, any more coverage. Zooming in, of course, you will see more of the fabric through, but from further away, it's, it's good. Um, the one thing I have to say, I hope my dad um, is prepared for how big this is going to be because I don't really have see if I have this around I'm trying to think yeah this is 32 count jobeler so this is in effect then doing over to 16 count which is gonna be quite a big bottle as you can see this is my head size it's gonna be quite big uh, I plan to frame it like really tightly just in this shape so that you just have a big bottle shaped design so I really hope he's prepared for how big this is going to be because it's going to be a big one I hope he will still like it because I felt that doing it over one would make it too petite so either way quite a good progress I still have two months to really get in this and finish it so 6th of October so it's still two full months and for those of you that are wondering, I, when I was talking about rummaging around for some thread, I rated my DMC floss and asked what colors my dad was interested in. I picked out some greens and some purples, purple being more of the wine color and green obviously being more bottle color. I picked some combinations of two or three greens and in the end he picked out the combination of these two which are, I don't know if you can see this, but either way, this is DMC 730, and this is DMC 734. So, nice contrasting colors, although the 734 is barely in the pattern at all. It's just some of the grapes, but it's okay. Um, it shows up nicely. So, that was the biggest progress I think you can say this month. Then the next item on the list is a finish. As I told you before I started the bottle, Wine by Alessandra Adelaide, I ran, I did a project over two with one thre thread, which was the first time that I did this. Um, it's a design by Heartstring Samplery called Winter Stocking yeah, winter stocking, I guess. No, winter snow. And it is done on 36 count flex linen, which was the first time for me stitching on linen. This got done so fast. Um, this was the first time I did it on linen, like I said. This was also the first time that I sewed in hint. So, oh. this was the first time that I did it on linen and also the first time that I did it on hand, in hand, because um, this piece of fabric was actually quite big um, and the design is pretty small. So since I wanted to do it kind of close to the edge, I did not use a hoop. So I used the sewing method and it actually worked really well because it was with one thread. And because the stitch count is so low, it was really, really so high, sorry. Um, it was really easy to do. Anyway, I finished this in about a day and a half. Um, I gotta say I didn't do so much other things than stitching in those days and a half. So this is why I got to finish it so quick. 
Um, but I'm really happy with the result and this is the dainty, cute winter snow ornament by Heartstring Samplery. And as you can see, it is just a slightly different take on the traditional stocking design. Um, obviously, I want to finish this up into a stocking ornament. Um, I guess this is going to happen closer to, to Christmas. You can hear my boyfriend sneezing in the background, probably. He's in the other room doing some studying. I have quite a lot of space to do some other things on here. I might do some additional ornaments on here because I really like this color. It's a very neutral, nice color. Like I said, 36 count Edinburgh linen in, I guess, flax. So that was a finish that I had this month. Then I started another project. I did not only start wine, I also started this project which is my first Brooks Books um, design. I have several of her designs. I ordered on her Etsy shop, I guess a year and a half ago, the um, Witchy Sisters pack, and they came from America and I've had them ever since. Like I have them hard copy. Um, by now, most of her designs are also available as, as PDFs. In the future, I would order them as PDFs since it's really not worth the shipping if I can also get them as PDFs. Anyway, um, Annie the Autumn Witch has been on my to stitch list for a very long time. And since autumn is coming, I decided to stitch her first. It took quite a while to finally get so far to order the supplies. And it's been really interesting. I started on Annie it's herself. And this is how far I got her. Sorry, it's like a little bit too light. I hope it's not really true colors, but I hope you get an ID. I'm except for the bodice, which is here in the middle, obviously, and her face, I am done with Annie herself. And then I will start on a separate piece of perforated paper to do all of the accessories. So you will have a little squirrel and a basket and a carrot and her hat and some leaves. So then the little details are going to come in. But I actually already did some back stitching. Um, this is not going to pick up very well. Sorry. Maybe if I tap this. It's not going to focus. I'm sorry. Anyway, um, here is some green Krennic and here's some gold. I'm sorry that this is not focusing so well, but I hope you get the ID. And also the shoes were done in Krennic. And these are all number four braids. No. Number four. Uh... Number eight, number eight braids. I just checked the bag. This is a nice thing. This is all the supplies that I need for any of the autumn watch, which is quite a full bag. So this is how far I got with her. Like I said, pretty much finished with her except for the bodice and the face. And then I'm gonna continue with all the other little things. I guess if I really focus on this, it shouldn't take me too long. Um, I guess most time is going to go into assembling her, which will be fun. <laughs> and the next thing is a finish. And this is what else? There cannot be a month without a Mill Hill finish. <laughs> this is, let me see, Jingle Bell Scent. This is here, so it's better. It looks kind of frowny. There are a lot of beads in this beard. That was crazy bead overload. Then the little tree here and obviously a little bell because oh, this is better. 
slightly. He seems to focus on me and not on him. Anyway, Jingle Bell Santa. It, this is a companion piece to the Pine Tree Ho Ho that I showed you last month. This has not been fully finished yet. I will finish it like I finish all my ornaments, which is just felt on the back and a ribbon here. So, and oh yeah, I kind of forgot. Um, Heartstring Semplory Winter Stocking was done with just two threads, which is Weak Style Works, both of them, and one is Pelican Gray. Um, 1302 Pelican Grey and the other one is Seagull which is 1300. The one is more silvery and this is definitely more brown grayish color. So yeah, I kind of forgot to tell. Um, and then the last thing which I finished just yesterday which was very interesting to finish and I might actually go in and do some pruning and stuff, maybe add some beads because I'm not 100% um, happy with this. But anyway, this is another mill hill, because you know, I love mill hills. And this is Root Beer Dragonfly. And this is definitely an older series. I want to say that it was early 2000s. But I picked these up from so-and-so two years ago I guess so yeah this is where I'm not really happy with like the beads here show kind of what is underneath it's so annoying that it does not focus on this that's maybe way too blingy but yeah anyway a dragonfly with a tail and everything and this is originally meant to be a pin kit I'm not going to finish it as a pin. Um, I'm thinking that I might do the same here also, put felt on the back and then finish it as an ornament. Not sure if this one is going to go on the Christmas tree because it more has, has more of a autumn -y feel. So might go in an autumn and a tree branch or something. Anyway, I also have a, another version of this, a more silvery blue one. And there's four other ones that I don't own, but I do plan to stitch because I like to pretty much stitch all the mail hill things. And pretty much that was it for the stitching that I did. I finished the dragonfly yesterday, which was a long time coming because like I said, right now I'm getting such hot flashes because it's been crazily warm here. Consistent temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius and often going towards 35, 36, which is crazy. Um, I don't know how people that live in the desert do this because it's insanely hot. It doesn't even cool off anymore. Um, it pretty much stays like 25, 26 through the night. Tonight was an exception. It went down to 17, so it was really nice. But yeah, I'm really done with this weather. They say it's even going to be 37 next week, so oh, I need to prepare for some more weather. But at least the coming week I'm off, so maybe I have some time for stitching. Um, like I said, I've been in a little bit of a stitchy rut. Um, I gotta say, most of the projects that I've been working on don't really call me so much anymore. I would really like to finish bigger things, like for example, the Wacky Witches and Stitches, which I showed you very great progress on last month. Um, I would love to have this done for Halloween so that I can display it, but if I'm aiming for an early October finish, that would still give me two months, so this means I don't have to work on it this month. Um, the same with the wine, it only needs to be finished in two months, so it means doesn't have to be worked on this month and any of the autumn which is kind of I guess the same I mean September October maybe October and November would be good to have it done so also not really a piece that I want to work on right now so this leaves me kind of clueless as to what to do next I have been thinking that I should really put the magazines that I have to good use um, 
I don't know if any of you people remember it, but I guess it was 2015 that um, the big magazine cross stitch collection, cross stitcher, cross stitch gold, all of the the good ones, so to say, um, the good British ones, so to say, um, did a, an amazing mega sale during Christmas time where they had all of their issues, back issues for 99 cents. And on my trusty iPad one, which is ancient and very big, I still have all of these issues. And this is the only reason that I don't get rid of this iPad because I cannot transfer them anywhere else. They're on here in the specific apps. I mean, it's not, uh, the, it's still like the, the, I don't even know how you call it. It's the um, newsstand app, which is not even available anymore, I guess. And anyway, um, I have them all like this. This is still way back old magazines. But the top rows are all my cross stitch magazines that I bought. There's also some just cross stitch. Not much, but the mo majority of the issues that I've on here are cross stitch collection. Um, that are older, so 2015, 2012, 2011, 2010, I guess the oldest issue that is on here is Christmas 2009. And there is about 24, uh, 33 issues on here. And I have, apart from one project, not even, I have not stitched a single project from any of these magazines. So the idea is probably that I will pick something from one of these magazines and stitch maybe something small, something medium, maybe a card or an ornament, I don't know, but something from these so that they get used. And not to mention all the digital editions that I have stored on my laptop. So I have maybe 200 to 250 digital magazines and I have maybe stitched two or three designs from this. So I need to get cracking. So this is I guess what I will do for the rest of the afternoon for this super hot Sunday afternoon. Get figured out what I'm going to stitch in August and hopefully I will get something done this week. I even though I'm free, I will have to go some places and see some people, obviously never completely free, but especially in the mornings I should have, and in the evenings, I should have some time to stitch. So yeah, this was my update for July. Um, I guess there's also going to, might be some stash in, in August, depending on what I'm decide to stitch. As my budget is back to 56 euros and 80 cents, I record, I do stitch from stash my own way. I give myself a 10 euro budget each month at the beginning of the month. And of course, for every finish, depending on how big it is, I will give myself money accordingly. Um, I did the big haul, which I showed you last month, which was quite a dent into my stitchy budget. I went all the way back down to 14 euros and now with all the finishes that I've had since then it, I've been I'm up to 56 euro and 80 cents again so I don't know might buy some supplies maybe some fabric or I don't know maybe some patterns but I guess maybe more towards supplies as I really really want to stitch some things out of my magazines and get some things out of the way that I've been looking at and looking at and see other people stitch. But for some reason, magazines, they are, they're very excellent source for things to stitch. But you kind of forget about them because they are not physically there. And it takes kind of a, a little bit of looking. I don't immediately know what I have. And yeah, obviously when I open the magazine, I'm like, oh yeah, this was in, this was in here and this was in there. But as you can imagine, having 250 
give or take digital magazines from seven or eight different publishers or um, from seven or eight different mag uh, sorts cross stitcher and cross stitch crazy and cross stitch favorites and just cross stitch and uh, cross stitch gold and cross stitch collection and wool cross stitching um, it's very hard to remember what is all in there and not to even mention I got the DVD with all the Christmas ornament issues from 19 something until 2014 and I have not made a single thing from those either so don't know what's gonna happen this month but I'm gonna promise you I will figure out one or two or maybe three things to stitch from my magazines so this was it short update and I will see you back at the end of August or maybe earlier if I have a lot to show but either way end of August so bye guys <laughs>